Good morning and welcome to ICON 2016, coming to you live from Gallagher Convention Center. For this particular presentation, we've actually got some South African podcasters who are going to be sharing their information, and some ideas, some tips and tricks about how you might want to start getting into podcasting and might you, what you might want to think about. So firstly, to my left, we have Greg Barlow from Geek of All Trades. Hello, everyone. Then we have Doe Pretorius, also from Geek of All Trades. Hi again. <laughs> and then finally, at uh, the end, we have Dimpo Moeti. Now, Dimpo is part of the team that is on the Variance Cover podcast that Geek XP produces once a month, where we talk about random comic goodness. Yeah, pretty much. That's exactly what we do. <laughs> <laughs> and Hello, Dimpo, everyone. Dimpo does, Dimpo does have a podcast, an imminent podcast coming up. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> We won't, put her on, uh, we won't put her under too much pressure to reveal the details now. <laughs> yeah. To be right. fair, I'm moving to Cape Town in like a week, so it kind of put a halt on the plans for the podcast. They have technology in Cape Town. You can mm. still do it. <laughs> we're, putting the, we're putting the pressure on you, Disney. <laughs> right. So I think the first question to help guide people, they might be thinking about doing a podcast because it is really easy to get into the podcast mm. format. Mm. But I think the first thing that a lot of people should do is refine the topic and their format. Mm. Greg, I, you and Doe, was it a mutual collaboration? W were you the instigator? How did the <laughs> Geek of All Trades <laughs> podcast idea come about? Okay, well, it sort of came about in that we both sort of had the idea at the same time. Yeah, yeah I think it was. Why, yeah. why did you have the idea? What prompted it? Uh, both of us listen to a lot of podcasts, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you listen to a lot of podcasts? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. it was, it, while his exile in the middle of nowhere, and we, all we had mm. communication was over G-Talk and stuff, we get into conversations and stuff and be like, this would make really interesting stuff, we hope. Yeah. Sort of thing. That and other people might like to listen to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. and then... So when, when I eventually did come back to civilized society, away from, <laughs> yeah. from the middle of nowhere where right. I was working... Uh, we, we sort of got together and we're like, you know what, let's actually give recording it a try and see if uh, yeah. people do listen. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. Now, with the, the format idea, so mm -hmm. we, you know you wanted to do a podcast, what was the process that you went through to decide, well, is it going to be 30 minutes? Is it going to be once a month? Is it going to be uh, twice a month? Mm -hmm. What were your thought processes through that? Mm. Uh, well, what we did is we sat down and because we both listen to a lot of podcasts, we've got a, like a, a wide variety of choice on available sort of content and where, uh, how they go about it. So we sat down amongst the two of us and sort of hammered out how we want to um, uh, go, what sort of format we're going for. Mm -hmm. And we decided that uh, content-wise, uh, if, if you make it too long, people lose interest and sort of won't listen to the whole thing. So we, we cut it up into chunks at okay. the end of the day uh, to make it more listenable for people who are like on the go and don't so have the full time. So your podcast is actually sectionable? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right. I think that came about because Greg initially wanted to do something longer mm -hmm. and I was mm -hmm. much more of a fan of a 30 minute sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we discussed it for a bit and came to the compromise of, yeah. okay, let's keep yeah. it with short but segment it so that people can get that 30 minute bite if they need to. Because that's cool. a lot of time when people are driving into work or mm. whatever necessarily have time to listen to a whole section or right. a whole hour or an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you don't want to go halfway through a podcast, stop it, and then come back because you can't remember what's happened or stuff like that. So, how how long is the typical Geek of All Trades podcast? About two hours. About two hours. Yes, yeah. we've got two thirty-minute segments roughly, and then one mm. one-hour main segment. A long a long interview yeah. segment. Yeah. Correct. All right, uh, Dimple. Yo. <laughs> thank <laughs> thank you for the acknowledgement. <laughs> we've and and a hip acknowledgement at that. We've we've chatted. Previously, about you getting into getting into podcasting, yeah, uh, you've had podcast ideas with up and coming Hollywood superstar Naz Houston and uh, <laughs> Greg Nell. What were the thoughts and conversations that you guys had about how we're going to do our topics? What format are we going to take? What were those conversations you had? I like that you think that we had those kinds of conversations <laughs> when it came oh, to our am podcast. I, am I attributing um, too much planning to you? <laughs> A little bit. I think what was important to us is trying to make sure that the podcast is as, is as accessible as possible. Because, I mean, sometimes, especially between the three of us, it's easy to get bogged down into, like, very, very deep kind of... Uh, very deep kind of conversations where we talk a lot about comic book characters that, like, maybe five people have heard of. So it's about <laughs> maintaining accessibility for the people who are listening mm -hmm. to a podcast to make it enjoyable for everyone. So there's and a trade... Where, as, the, as the guys were saying, there's a trade-off here between... We're having these conversations that we enjoy and we think other people might enjoy, but they can't be too niche 
yeah. that will have four people globally. Yeah, like yeah. four people who can listen to it, four people who can also understand it. So, I mean, particularly when we're looking at the topics as well, it's about top picking topics that aren't just interesting to us, but we think that can be interesting for a wide variety of people. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we look at the movies that are coming out as well, mm -hmm. like we did a Batman versus Superman one and a Civil War one. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Or we just do a little bit, you know, like a little something for the community and like complaining about what it's like to work in comic book stores and having those discussions and sort of mm -hmm. hoping everyone can get entertainment out of our stories as well mm -hmm. from that, which is, which is a lot of fun. All right, so what would be, I'm going to ask each of you for a piece of advice to the audience. What would be your suggested tip in relation to topic and format? Mm. What process should people think about? Okay, topic-wise, you've got to be very careful about mm. topic because, uh, like Dizzy was saying before, there's a lot of topics that you may think are interesting, but other people will just pass it over as a... Do you have any examples, Greg? <laughs> um, uh, like a particular episode <laughs> of an obscure anime or something yes, along those lines? Yes, something like that. Uh, if, you, if you pick up... Uh, a very popular anime that you think is very popular and you try and make a whole episode on it, a lot of people, it'll just go straight over their heads because they're not even interested in what anime. What is this One Punch Man thing? Yes. One, oh, right. <laughs> so until there's even? a cultural acceptance, <laughs> yeah. so until it becomes culture accepted um, and widespread, then, then you're better off. Um, yeah. The best way we sort of deal with that is we often bring it back and then we have a general anime sort of episode as an example and then we'll discuss One Punch Man in the, an in the episode, mm -hmm. but in general we keep it broader Mm -hmm. so that it, it keeps it more accessible to more listeners. Okay, so yeah. I, I think try and pick something that you're comfortable speaking about because if you go into something where you're not, an ex not necessarily an expert, but don't have knowledge and you're caught out by it by your listeners, mm -hmm. mm. it's going to be bad for you from there. You need to be able to have your own opinion of it and you need to have your own uh, takes and how people like, want to listen to you because you have an opinion mm -hmm. that says, this is how I like this, or this is why I like this, mm -hmm. um, and something that you're comfortable speaking about, so there's no ums, likes, mm. ahs, those sort mm -hmm. of things in between. Is that something, actually, I'm, I'm going to slightly digress on that. Yeah. Speaking voice, you, when you're <laughs> having a, a, a regular conversation with your friends, there's a lot of witty banter, we're back and forward, we're all really good. The moment you put a microphone in front of somebody, then it's, well, hello, <laughs> hi, I am how a human are things? Being. And, yeah. it, and it becomes stilted. Did you, um, did the three of you, were you comfortable for the moment? It would, you would have had a bit of a, a training wheels. Type, <laughs> type. How long did it take you to get comfortable speaking into the microphone and getting back to, hey, this is just a conversation between us? Yeah. How long did that take? I think about two episodes for us, yeah. honestly. Like the, the first two you can sense were a bit... Yeah. Uh, awkward uh, feeling. Awkward <laughs> feeling and everything was there. But <laughs> by about the third, it, it's mm. getting mm. that flow. I think we still get a lot of times where I'll listen to a podcast back and go, oh, there's, there's a lot of likes. Or, um, yeah, but there's, there's a lot of speech mm -hmm. patterns you've got to look out for. Look <laughs> but, you yeah. know, you get over it and you get over the, oh, someone's tangenting. Mm. Oh, well, but yeah. just go with it. It's conversation. Everyone's right. going to go with that and it makes it interesting. Sure. Also, yeah. mm -hmm. oh, sorry, does he? Hey <laughs> guys, I'm here too, you know. <laughs> I mean, sorry, the blue hair is just going into the background. It's kind of like a, kind of like a green screen. Yeah, I, I'm not really here. It's just it's an apparition to make it seem as though like a woman is also talking about podcasting. <laughs> um. <laughs> Top call. Top call. <laughs> Uh, I've actually forgotten the question after my smart aleck <laughs> No, I, I think that... <laughs> Which of the two questions though? am I answering? Okay, so let's answer the, first, uh, the, the, one, the current question is, how long did it take you to get comfortable speaking oh, yeah. into the microphone and getting over the fact that I am mic'd? Um, I was actually very comfortable with it. I think that because of sort of where we're recording, re recording it, which feels very informal, as well as the fact that, you know, we're with friends, so we feel comfortable, and I've never felt the need to sort of um or ah or feel awkward. And mm -hmm. I've always been a very public speaking-y kind of person, mm -hmm. right. even though apparently English is hard right now. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's very easy to get comfortable mm -hmm. behind the camera for me and like with a microphone where people can't necessarily mm -hmm. see me. Mm -hmm. right. I think what we might do is then move on to... you've. So there's some, takeaway, there's some takeaways from that first section. You need to understand exactly what topic you want to be talking about. Understand that while you want to share this topic with other people, you need to do it in such a way that the topic is accessible. 
that you want other people to sit down and go, okay, this is interesting. What do you have to offer? Be clear on what you're trying to do and what you have to offer. The idea of being able to make money out of podcasts may come eventually for you, but it's not necessarily what you should be going in. Unless you're a professional production company, it's not something you should be thinking about up front. It's, I'm enjoying this, this is fun, maybe other people will start enjoying it as well. A good example of that is Bacon Battalion. The Bacon Battalion crew do a, a YouTube channel where they publish their own role-playing sessions. They put it online, and other people are now finding that fun. So that's what's happened. They're getting a little bit of success. They're starting to get uh, uh, a little bit of publicity on YouTube. That should not be your ultimate goal. Be clear on your topic, and then be clear on the format. How long do you want this episode to be? I think one other thing that relates to that in relation to format is your publishing schedule. Mm. Yeah. Geek of all trades, you're on a monthly schedule, correct? Yes. Correct, okay. Yeah. Why did you decide on that schedule? Uh, mostly our schedule's based off uh, availability. I right, mean, you we, work. we both have day jobs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and this is essentially a hobby for us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we felt deadline-wise, we, we, uh, it's very important for us to get an episode out every month. Mm -hmm. uh, even when I'm sent to random locales in the middle of the world, we still manage. Uh, I think I missed an episode, but we still got one out. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. manage to wrangle one it's together. Learn how to edit. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, but yeah, we, we view it as an important point to have a consistent release date mm -hmm. uh, because then people know when to come look for uh, the episode. Sure. And uh, yeah, essentially, as long as we release on that day, every day, Mm -hmm. uh, every month, then we're comfortable. And we've, it gives us enough time to work on the episode and get it edited and have it recorded yeah. and everything. Right. I, I think the main thing there was like, we have discussed before that if we get comfortable enough with it that we would move to a more frequent. Mm -hmm. So it's just trying to keep within a, a comfortable zone. Mm. Sure. So, mm -hmm. you know. right. yeah, but the conversations, I mean, the Variance cover podcast yeah. is a once a month episode in the Release the Geek yeah. library. Why did we do that? See, I think for us it's definitely because it's nice to say that we're going to do something once a month, but there are like five of us, so we are very busy. And also it's very important to sort of know what it is you can do with the time that's available to you. So I mean, I think that like being able to be topical, mm -hmm. particularly with the kind of subject matter we have, which is comic books, so making sure that like when we do release something, we can release something with the movies, we can release something when a game is coming out, it's a lot easier to keep that going um, once a month, mm -hmm. especially because it is a hobby for us as well. It's not mm -hmm. quite a full-time job yet. Yeah. There is that, the aspect of being able to be uh, committed to a certain time frame is really important. If you're doing a monthly podcast, you need to drop it same day, same, well, not necessarily same time, but commit to the same day on that schedule. The moment you start dropping your schedule and going, oh, well, it's a couple of days late, I'm sorry, that starts becoming a habit. If this is going to be something that you want to do, you need to be able to stick to that schedule and make sure that you meet it. For the Release the Geek podcast, we always release on a Thursday. And in one instance in our 72 episodes so far, we've managed to drop that episode at 11.57 p.m. <laughs> on a Thursday night. We did everything we could to make sure that happened, and we managed to cut it in. But we've stuck to our Thursdays. We commit to 40 episodes a year. You will get 40, they will drop on a Thursday, and we will let you know if we're going to be taking a break. We try to do at least 10 episodes, then take a break, another 10 episodes. Be uh, part of the reason for this is it's going to take longer than you think. If I throw to Greg and I throw to Doe now when it comes to the production of their podcasts, <laughs> sure, we can do this. Now, Doe's had to learn editing. How long did it take you to try and pick up editing on the fly? A, a little while there. Like, it, it's some <laughs> programs and stuff there, so I had to first get the software, install it, then work out how it had been split between the different uh, streams, mm -hmm. work out how to split the audio for myself, mm -hmm. try to get Greg while he's in Malaysia yeah, to, to ask give how to do this, <laughs> uh, split the um, intro, re-record it and everything. Re-record so, the intro? So yeah. you, you had to do something on the spot. Greg, mm. you're, an, you're responsible for all of the editing, etc. Mm. When you started and you got your first podcast and listening to this and you're not necessarily cool with mic techniques, and there's mm. a lot of arms, there's a lot of arms and pauses, intakes of breath, those <laughs> sorts of things. How long did it take you to get a handle on the editing process? Uh, it took quite a while. Um, mm -hmm. Like Doe was saying, you have to learn the program to begin with. Sure. Uh, they're not difficult to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they're quite easy to pick up. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of free programs out there you can use as well. Okay. 
but uh, uh, it took a few days just to get the hang of it and get comfortable with it. And when you're dealing with large audio files as well, sometimes you've got to go and cut and paste mm -hmm. and chop and, and glue together and gotcha. get rid of pauses and ums and ahs. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then once I established a sort of a, a template to mm -hmm. work on an episode, it, it made things a lot quicker because mm -hmm. then you can use that template. When you've got your next episode, you just go back to your previous template mm -hmm. and then you can sort of fill in the gaps and, sure. and change things up a bit. And mm -hmm. it, it made things a lot quicker once you get the hang of it. Did you expect that the editing process would take as long as it did? When you, hey, we've recorded this, I'm going to put it down, I'm just going to do this and this and this and tweak, <laughs> and then I'm going to release. How long did you initially expect that post-production process to take? Uh, no, well, it, it pretty much what, what I expected, because, okay. uh, I mean, uh, recording, we, we, get, we generally get about three hours of audio for a two-hour podcast, because mm -hmm. we record all the in-between bits. Sure. Um, so I knew it would be at least three hours. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to listen to the entire exactly. process. Exactly. You've yeah. got to listen through everything sure. in case you miss an hour or an hour or a pause or a dog barking in the distance or something. Right. So, uh, yeah, uh, it, it generally ends up being about four hours maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but generally, whilst I'm doing it, I sort of multitask a bit in between sure. and like, mm -hmm. follow along on other things whilst I'm doing it. So. Because gotcha. you just need the audio component in the yeah. background. Yeah. It's kind of like listening to a really long podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's something uh, it, the budding podcaster needs to think about. You've recorded that. Your job is not done. If your podcast is one hour long, you now need to spend at least one hour listening to that podcast, trying to edit out your ums, your ahs. You'll start noticing very, very quickly the verbal crutches that you rely on, such as like. But I... Every now and again, I just want to send a mail through to certain podcasts and say, I want to challenge you to do an episode where, where you do not use the term like ever <laughs> unless it's actually in a comparative sense. You'll understand as you start listening to these things that these are the things that you do, these are the traps that you fall into, and you need to be prepared that however long your episode is, you're now going to spend that amount of time at least mm. in post-production to make sure you have a polished product. Let's talk equipment. You decided you wanted to do a podcast. Mm. From the Geek XP section, we, uh, uh, we went to somebody who is a sound engineer. Mm. That's what they do for jobs. So, right, please give me an intro, a medium, and a top of the line option as far as how I do my recording. So, I had somebody professional tell me what my expected budget should be. Mm. You can get started. The Bacon Battalion crew, they do it simply with their smartphones and an in ear headpiece that has a speaker. They can record everything like that. So you can have intro options. When Geek of All Trades started out, what were you looking at doing from your gear perspective? Okay, well, coincidentally, another podcast started up very similarly at the, at, along the same time. What a jerk. You must have stolen <laughs> some of your thunder. Um, <laughs> I actually remember that conversation when, when you, 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 we met and, and you were like, mm -hmm. oh, we're going to start a podcast. I was like, ah, oh, that's what we were going to do. You stole our idea. <laughs> There's room enough in the interwebs um, for more than one. But it, it was... Uh, very fortuitous because you had gone and spoken to everyone and you mm -hmm. found out some good options and you'd managed to really get some, your hands on some cool tech. Yeah, so the, the Release the Geek podcast records on a Zoom H6 and we have a couple of Rode Shotgun mics NTG2s. Uh, we've now also upgraded to a couple of Sennheiser Lav mics. Now, those sorts of things are a bit pricey. They're mm -hmm. a bit expensive. Uh, however, for the, the level of professionalism that we want, mm -hmm. that's what we've committed to. So we gave... Uh, we kind of gave uh, Geek of All Trades loan of that equipment for them to get started to mm. do their things. What did you then decide to do uh, um, from that point? Yeah, Doe and I both decided that we wanted it to be good quality audio mm -hmm. um, yeah. because there's nothing worse than a podcast where you, you have mm. cringing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, after using your, your tech and borrowing it for our first two episodes or so, we mm -hmm. decided we are going to go something similar. Mm -hmm. uh, we went a little bit lower down on the, on the scheme of things. I think it's the Zoom 4. Yeah, mm -hmm. Zoom 4. Yeah, Zoom 4. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's still Zoom, which is, uh, we're very happy with. It's giving sure. us amazing audio. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think also um, I bought myself a, a cheap USB mic. Uh, yes. Cheap and over a thousand still sort of thing there. Right. A, a Samsung. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're great. Mm -hmm. And portable mic gives you good quality if you're doing the editing and stuff and need mm -hmm. to record little extra things. Sure. Uh, I know Greg has a, a the snowball. snowball. Yeah, the snowball actually well. also so gets it's, very it's just good useful audio. for those things. Of, and we're sponsored by, or, and our guests this week are this person and this person to record mm -hmm. those little things you don't necessarily get during the podcasting. Right. Yeah. Um, and it, it's a, a small enough investment. You just want to try and get something that's at least quality that you don't get 
the stuttering, yeah. etc. in the background. Um, sure. What's it, the uh, toaster mic? Yes, <laughs> toaster mic. <laughs> toaster mic. Right. Toaster mics. Yeah. Dimple, you. you're now going, you're moving away from us. You're going to I another am. city, so you're losing access to all this amazing equipment that other podcasters <laughs> have to offer you. You're going to be stepping into this completely fresh. So what are the things that you, now that you've played in the podcast realm, yeah. what are the things that you know, I need to be aware of this, I need to be aware of this, when I step forward? I think, especially if you, because I'm starting fresh, a couple of things that I'm aware of is, firstly, I need to make sure I know what it is I want to speak about and what it is that's going to make us different from the other podcasts that are available out there. The next thing that's really important to understand is where are you going to record it? You know, choose a space that's mm -hmm. conducive to good sound, especially because I'll be starting out with a starter kit. Like, I won't have Les's lovely equipment. But, you know, you have to make decisions about what is the best you can do with what you have. Mm -hmm. And if in that time it's a, my cell phone mic or it's, you know, buying USB mics like Doe just mentioned, mm -hmm. You have to then figure out where will be the best place to record it mm -hmm. so that you get the best out of it. Mm -hmm. Also, like what editing equipment to use, because there are a different variety, and I think that's mm -hmm. something that we should mm -hmm. totally touch on next. Well, let's touch on software. <laughs> I know uh, Release the Geek sound guy, the master of the dark digital arts, Frank Restratum, he uses uh, the Adobe suite. Yeah. Uh, he uses yeah. Adobe, uh, Adobe Audible or Audience. We'll Let's give that, see. Frank, who can update us on the notes. Yeah. Uh, so he, because that is his job, that is his production process, he's got access to that software. You're coming into this, Greg, what software, you've gone, okay, now I need to edit it because this sounds a bit rough. Mm. What did you choose? Why did you choose it? Where did you go? Okay, uh, I did a little bit of research beforehand mm -hmm. and uh, I looked into mostly free software because... It's a hobby, and yeah. I'd already spent a large amount on equipment. equipment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Adobe's not cheap either. And the, yeah, no, Adobe, Adobe yeah. licensing-wise yeah. isn't, isn't mm -hmm. the cheapest option to go mm -hmm. with to begin with, uh, unless you've got it for work already. Uh, so uh, I ended up deciding on Audacity, Audacity I think. Yeah. Yes, Audacity. And uh, as far as an editing for sound uh, goes, it's perfect. Uh, it can't do video mm -hmm. or anything like that. How like much did it cost you? That's free, 100% oh, free. Free, sorry. Uh, and so you can just go and download it straight away from SourceForge or wherever you choose. Mm -hmm. And it does all the editing functions I need down right. on the podcast. Yeah. Multiple audio streams, so I can, I can have my intros as a separate audio stream. Mm -hmm. I can have my music overlaid, and I can dampen mm -hmm. the music down or, or erase the volume of the speaker uh, because we also record all speakers on a different channel. Right. And yeah, overall, it's treated me well. Right. Dimple, what are yes. you... What are you now looking at? What are you keeping in mind when it comes to software? We've got a, we've got a free yeah, package I mean, that works. What are you looking I'm at? I'm pretty much going to check out the Audacity, mm. but I know because I'm one of these heathen MacBook users that <laughs> <laughs> I generally tend, like I, I move towards like GarageBand, I move towards mm -hmm. Soundtrack Pro mm -hmm. to, give those, um, to give those programs a look at as well because they come with a computer and they're actually mm -hmm. quite cool and interesting. I mean, they'll also be very useful for creating an intro because I don't think I'll have Franco's magical powers <laughs> once I go down to the cape anymore. I don't know what dark gods he worships, but he does a good job. <laughs> uh, I think in general there, it's mm -hmm. just trying to find something that's open source for you mm -hmm. to use for that. It's yeah. the easiest thing to find for intros. Mm -hmm. so you don't need to necessarily know a guy in a band or know mm -hmm. someone with a... Although knowing people in bands could be very helpful because that's mm -hmm. a, a good cross-promotion thing. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. There's, it's actually, um, I'm, I'm going to segue nicely <laughs> to that. So a lot of the intro files that you see for Icon 2016, the video promotion that we've done over the course of the weekend, the soundtrack was actually provided by Dieties Muse, a South African band. It's their track, Satellites. Now, in the conversations, we needed to get uh, a piece of music. We wanted to get something nice. We happened to know Wayne Boucher, lead singer uh, of Dieties Muse, who said, did you have any clips of music that lying around? He said, well, why don't you just use this one just acknowledge the band, mm. yeah. and that's all we'll be doing. So when these videos actually go up on live uh, on YouTube next week, there will be prominent placement that this band's music, which was great, thank you very much to these guys because this is what they've done. So wrapping up on the topic of equipment, there's free software out there. You've got Audacity. If you're using a Mac, you've got... Uh, hey, I, saw that. I don't know, did that go out over there? <laughs> I'm sorry, can we edit that? Um, you've got something like GarageBand. Uh, you do have paid software. If you're a student, take advantage of the Adobe student rates on the Creative Cloud. As far as equipment is concerned, 
Don't mention that he can just use a USB microphone. Now, when I was setting up the podcast for Elisa Geek, I asked a couple of people around. Zion Barnard from Primordial Soup, he suggested just a couple of hundred bucks, a mic that ran from my USB port. And if you're using the right software, you can help correct a lot of the static that you might normally pick up. The better the sound input, the more you can do with it. So the best you it, do the best you can do. You don't have to spend a lot of money. There are even attachments that you can put together onto your iPhone or onto your smartphone, which act as mini recorders. So you've got the sound file. If you've got a smartphone, you can start recording now with the note function. You can use free software like uh, Audacity, and you can start creating a podcast right now. So it doesn't have to be an expensive proposition to get in. Site and hosting. You've mm. done your podcast. You've spent some time. You've polished your product. What was your thought process going through to where am I going to put this and how much is it going to cost me? Yes. Okay. Hosting-wise, uh, I, I decided there's two things you really need. You need a website mm -hmm. as a presence mm -hmm. and you need, uh, you need somewhere to store all your podcasts so that people can go back and, and look into the distant past and find your earlier podcasts because not everyone starts from the beginning and just listens along. Right. So there are a lot of podcast hosting services out there. Mm -hmm. Which ones did you look at? I started off with a service called Panopto, mm -hmm. um, but that, that was because somebody had like a voucher for me, so I okay. could give it a try sure. and have a look. And it, it's actually a lot more focused on video than yeah. podcasting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in the end, I can't remember what made us shift from Panopto. Um, I, I believe it was Sips's podcast, and it was like he mentioned that he was on Lipson. And oh, yes, we yeah. Like, oh, um, yeah, that worked. Oh, yes, yeah. Sips's podcast was on Lipson, and then a few other podcasts. Who's, whose podcast? Uh, the, it's an international podcast by, what's his actual name? I can't even... uh, Chris Lovaz. Chris Lovaz, or Sips, as he's Sips. more, more commonly it. known. He's okay. a YouTube um, personality. Um, mm -hmm. He had done a couple of like, little podcasts and stuff. He mentioned that he had distributed his stuff on Lipson. And I think mm. Lipson is mm. it distributes mm -hmm. across multiple channels. So you yes. can get it on iTunes and on mm -hmm. the Windows one, or various places with there. And um, we did a little bit of an investigation because we wanted to find out, okay, was it going to be a similar price point? Mm. Was it going to be mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. all that? And, it came out to be quite reasonable with Yeah, them, it was so. actually cheaper than Panopto. What sort of numbers were you looking at that you had to judge by? Uh, it, it worked out to be, I think Panopto was about 200 Rand a month or so, okay. whilst mm -hmm. Lipson works out to be about 140. Okay. And that distributes across all platforms, mm -hmm. and it gives you feeds, and it gives you mm -hmm. iTunes integration, and it, mm -hmm. essentially it gets it to everywhere where someone would want to listen to podcasts. Right. Yeah. Okay. And they give you uh, uh, detailed tracking of who's downloading where. Sure. So it gives you a sort of idea of where your audience lies and mm. uh, where they're downloading from. Okay. Then, but what are you yeah. thinking about now with, with your potential podcast? What are the thoughts that you've had? How are you going to go forward with it? I mean, one of the big thoughts I've had is because before the move was going to happen, we had a plan in place of what it was we were going to do with the podcast I was going to start out with. So the first thing to think about is, what do I want my podcast to be? Do I want it to keep it in the same vein I had it originally? Or do I want to change it slightly so that I can, have, so I can do it with other people while in Cape Town? And when I do do that, the big question becomes then, what will make our podcast different? What is it about our podcast that will, want, will make people want to listen to us, right? And the second thing to think about then is also just the branding. Like, is this going to be a podcast that will continue to be with uh, Geek XP? Am I going to sort of branch out on my own and go do something else? I'll be and so if I, proud. And if <laughs> <laughs> I'll be very proud. <laughs> I probably won't because I really like being with Geek XP. It's <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but also just, what the hell am I going to call my podcast? So if anyone has a name, an idea for a podca any podcast idea names, just send them to me. So, social media that. Yeah, Getting social dizzy, media that. We, 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 we put a poll up before we start. Like, Hashtag name the podcast. Hashtag name the podcast. Name name Dizzy's podcast. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple of points here from a, from a site and hosting <coughs> perspective. How you get your podcast out there and making it available, as Greg said, mm. to as many people as possible, there are multiple channels. Where do people normally get their podcasts? Ask them. Do you record on iTunes? Do you, do you publish on iTunes? Are you just an RSS feed? You need to understand the methods of distribution and how you can tap into them. When we were looking for Release the Geek, I went to Squarespace. I listened to a lot of podcasts. People talked about Squarespace. And then one of the adverts actually said, you can upload your podcast, which made me take a look at it. And it was really simple that 
there was an option in there, do you want to publish this to iTunes? Well, mm. yes, <laughs> thank you very much. Here's the line of code I need to give, and that was it. Inside of five days, my Squarespace website was now publishing my podcast to iTunes, which sounds incredibly authentic <laughs> and mm, it gives it yeah. an a, a amazing sense of reality. Yeah, an mm. amazing credibility that we publish on iTunes. It's actually really simple to publish on iTunes. You just have to know how to get there. There was a point I wanted to mention from a cost perspective with your music. There is a mountain of Creative Commons music out mm. there. All you need to do is acknowledge the person, which is what you should be doing anyway. If somebody's doing something cool and you're using it, acknowledge that person. So Creative Commons, you can get there free. From a hosting perspective, the numbers that Greg was talking about, 200 bucks a month, 140 bucks a month. That's a trip to the movies. That's a couple of serves of fast food. Well, it That's depends on how you, maybe <laughs> one <laughs> serve of fast food, maybe half a serve of fast food, depends on how gluttonous you're feeling. How much money you choose to spend is up to you, but it doesn't have to be a lot. So you might go, oh, 200 bucks, now that's, what, 2,800, uh, 2,400 bucks over the course of the year. You'll spend that on other things. Depending on how you want to go with your podcast, 140 bucks a month is pretty reasonable and can often be found just by cutting out other expenses. Mm -hmm. That shows the level of commitment you've got to your podcast. So we've talked about site and hosting. When you're looking at your hosting options, find out what channels they actually publish to. Mm. Do they do iTunes integration? Do they do RSS feed? Can it auto-publish on Twitter? Can it auto-publish on Facebook? Those are the things that need to go out and automate your process. You've already spent enough time recording your podcast. You've already spent enough time editing your podcast. Having to manage these processes is something that you should be passing to a service provider. And for 140 bucks a month, that's mm. awesome. All right, let's talk audience building. Mm. You've decided on your topic. You've crowdsourced a name for your podcast. It worked. You've come up with a you've come up with a product, and it's out there. You would like more people to look at it. Greg, what? Greg and what did Geek of All Trades do to try and spread the word that hey, we've got this thing? Please go and look. What did you do? Okay. Our initial launching point was social media because mm -hmm. it's grown to such a big thing nowadays. Uh, that most people have some social media account of some form somewhere. <laughs> so uh, our plan was essentially just to spread as far on social media as we could go. And then that sort of allows us, as long as you keep a sort of pressure on that social media and don't let it slide too badly, <laughs> you can slowly spread uh, into people's listening schedules. Like uh, an insidious Zerg Yes, yeah, creep. like slowly uh, creeping there, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah, someone I, gives I, you a I try. I think there, a lot of the time, um, to get listeners that are going to come back and continue to listen to you, it's better to have someone who's come through from word of mouth. Uh, mm. A friend who said, hey, you should really listen to this podcast. It had this really interesting thing there. Mm -hmm. uh, in comparison to, I know you go through with the whole thing of Facebook ads and et cetera, and we did it once. Mm. We got a whole bunch of likes from people <laughs> who are pretty sure don't listen yes. to it. Like <laughs> there were some mom. suspicious likes there. Yeah, like a mom <laughs> in the middle of the free state somewhere. Yes. Um, <laughs> Single mothers hey, in free hey, state. Hey, gig knows I, I no bounds. It, it knows no bounds, but I, I don't know quite if the in, uh, like Pathfinder episode. Yes, the particular topic of the episode <laughs> didn't really um, gel with the demographic <laughs> we were reaching. A Pathfinder <laughs> episode in Southern Bloemfontein. Yeah, yes. yeah. Gotcha. So, okay, I can um, totally buy that though. Yeah. Uh, possibly. But so we initially tried that, but that necessarily didn't give us hard likes. We didn't mm. see a spike necessarily on the traffic. Yeah, consistent the audience. There. That's but what we want to build. If you just constantly make the episodes out, keep them in a good quality, and make sure that your listeners know about it promote stuff through there. So mm -hmm. you're on your social media saying, hey guys, our new episode's about this, so we'll check it out. Uh, hey guys, we're interviewing these, these people. Please take a mm -hmm. look at it. Um, and trying to keep that constant. And as we say, the constant pressure. So it's a weird thing. Cause it came into a bit of a jump. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, there weren't so many. Then it, it jumped up at a stage. And then for a long while, it sort of hovered at an amount. But at the moment, even, we're seeing this constant of about, it grows about 10 more listeners. Mm -hmm. it, it just goes. And as soon as it gets that word of mouth growth, I think that's mm -hmm. what you're actually going for, is mm -hmm. trying to get that there. Yeah, it ties to consistency again. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're getting that podcast out every month or whatever, every two weeks or whenever you decide, and you're reliable in that, people will come back and be like, oh, it's the new episode of XYZ today. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I can go and watch that. And even if it's not a, an episode they're really interested in, mm -hmm. because they've come back to it and they know it's consistent and it's always going to be there and they know the content mm -hmm. is 
at least uh, as there's some content in there that they want to listen to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think also just on that, um, when you bring your guests on, having them promoted as well, because mm. uh, mm. that brings out their social circles as well into it. Uh, mm. And people then pick up things that they wouldn't have noticed before because mm. Mm. a publisher could have like, something on the Geek of All Trades. That necessarily doesn't mean that someone would be interested in 40K would have mm -hmm. found it, but perhaps they had some overlap because they just happened to buy that. Their friends they didn't know about necessarily, mm -hmm. and they find your podcast and bring in from that channel. Mm -hmm. Jimbo, when you're, you're now starting out, you're thinking about your yeah. podcast, you're considering about this audience building. Were there, did you, do you have any ideas of trepidation, of, of worry? What are my things that I need to be thinking of? What's going through your head when it comes to your audience building right now? I think like the biggest thing is finding the correct platform to do the audience building. Because I mean, there are only so many times you can ask your friends to <laughs> listen to something you've done if they don't really want to, right? Yeah. So I think a big part of no, it. No, no, there is no limit. <laughs> you, that's what friendships are about. Yeah. Constantly bad. Uh, that's why they're your friends. <laughs> I'm not even sure my mom has listened to my podcast yet, so I don't know how. She's not that mother in Bloemfontein <laughs> that listened to a podcast. Yeah, yet. oh, that explains, <laughs> that explains yeah. so much. Um, but um, on, on a serious note, I think that the interesting thing for me is about deciding on which platforms I want to promote mm -hmm. my, um, my podcast on, because mm -hmm. I think that everyone uses their social media very differently and we have different things we do on different profiles. Like the way you behave on Twitter is not the same as the way you behave on Instagram, which is not the same way you behave on Facebook. So it's making the decision about finding the correct platform for myself mm -hmm. to promote my work on. So they see the fun, exciting comic book lover Dimpo and not the mm -hmm. crazed, angry, yelling at people on Facebook Dimpo, <laughs> who might be a bit terrifying. <laughs> I think there might be a slight <laughs> misalignment between our social media presence. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think more than that, it's also about deciding what kind of pages you want for your podcast. Like, mm -hmm. is it just going to be something that I have like a little fan page for, or can it be a little bit more of an interactive page? And like, how will I draw people into it mm. before I even drop my first episode? Yeah. And how do I get your, the name out there and get and build the hype out there? Um, and I think that's quite an important thing to think about as well as before you even drop the episode, like how do you get people excited by the <laughs> fact that you're going to do it? Mm -hmm. uh, there's actually, um, uh, what we do is we cheat a little now and then and we, we run cross promotions. So we do things like the Great Geek Challenge, yes. which <laughs> then has maybe an achievement or two to attend a panel when we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying that's why we actually even have an audience right now? Yeah. Thank you. These are all audience. just people that don't care what we're saying. They just uh, want to unlock the achievement when we're done. At least four. Thanks very much. But uh, so, uh, but even just just doing little things on the side that aren't podcast related can sometimes mm -hmm. tie back into the podcast, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's just a way to grow your audience because uh, they they just don't know yet that they do like the podcast. You just mm -hmm. got to tell them that they do like it, and then <laughs> just kind of just kind of push mm. it there and and make sure they listen to it at least once, and then they know that they actually like the podcast. There is one point before we do a, a wrap up summary on this topic. There is one point that um, I'd like to bring up, and that's in the relation. Do mention guests. You might think, well, do, do I want a guest? Who would I have on as a guest? When it comes to audience building, those point of if you ask somebody onto the podcast, it's in their best interest because. They want to share that information because they would want somebody to also talk about them as well. So that sort of cross-promotion happens. I can tell you right now that the number of guests that GeekXP has shared with <laughs> Geek of All Trades is like, oh, we've reached out to this person. That would be a cool interview. Well, then get in touch with them and share that information around. When you're starting out, there's nothing wrong with talking to other podcasts and mm. other YouTube channels and having conversations. Mm. The main point that I would like to stress here when it comes to your audience building and Greg kind of touched on it, is that you need to be authentic. Mm. Get it out of your head right now that you're going to go viral with your third episode. <laughs> yeah. It rarely, rarely happens. And if you're going into this process for a viral hit where this is going to make you money, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Mm. Come in, to, that's what professional company-based podcasts, that's what they're for. If you're doing this as a passion project, you need to be authentic in your message. You need to be authentic in your processes. Greg's point of consistently making sure that your episode gets out on time shows your audience you care. Bacon Battalion, I'm going to use them again, recently had an issue where 
the main laptop for the person who was putting everything together crashed irrevocably, as in the hard drive became melted slag. They missed their episode. What they did do was they got on their cell phones and they recorded a video telling their audience, we are so sorry, but this is what happened to us. And they got amazing fan reaction. Mm. The fans went, oh, cool, yeah, hey, that happened to me. We totally understand. Thank you for going to the effort of telling us. If you drop a podcast, drop a podcast, drop it, and then don't, and nobody knows why, you'll move out of somebody's consciousness very, very quickly. Mm. Those point about a core audience. You will have people who will go, hey, I relate to what Dimpo is talking about. Dimpo is talking about comics from a specific angle that I can relate to. So yeah. I want to listen to her. That is somebody that becomes part of Dimpo's core audience. Your core audience will grow over time because eventually people will start talking to one another. Hey, you and I have the same values. Do, are you listening to Dimpo's podcast about uh, visionary director Zack Snyder? I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> this, sorry, that was, that was a slight in joke. <laughs> when you're going to have people talking and sharing these ideas, that's totally okay, and that will start spreading your audience organically. Doe and Greg, they're getting 10 more people. You know what? That may not sound like much each and every month, but that's another 120 people over the course of a 12-month period. Now, all of a sudden, that starts spreading. And when you're building your core audience, resist the urge to do the pay-per-click, like, come and mm, listen to that. Mm. Then you're going to have people in... Yes countries, you're not going to get your target market. You want your target market to be, to be people who relate to the message that you're putting through on your podcast, and you want them to come back. Right, so we're close to wrapping up on time. I'm going to ask for one final thought from each of you in relation to podcasting, one tip, one bit of advice, something that you've learned, some pearl of wisdom that you can pass out. Greg Barlow. Okay. Um Enjoy what you're doing when you podcast. Yeah. Uh, if you ever you find you're not enjoying what you're doing, then maybe you should reconsider doing it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, every episode, I enjoy recording every episode. Mm. And I think if I ever get to the stage where I'm like, oh, another episode, mm -hmm. then, then I think then it's time to maybe dial it down or something. Sure. But yeah. mm -hmm. as it stands, I enjoy every episode I record. And mm -hmm. I enjoy meeting new people and discussing geeky things. So enjoy what you do. Part of our stock in trade. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Doe, what have you got? Uh, I think just if you're thinking about making a podcast, just do it. Mm. They, yeah. they, if you don't put them in place, just go for it. You only learn by doing and you mm. only get out there. You'll be surprised that people will enjoy just listening to something we're talking about because anyone who's interested in something, you're very interested in getting that conversation and then from a different voice, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Simple. my big thing is have fun and also just be a little bit prepared. Like, be, whatever it is you want to discuss, make sure you've thought it through and there's enough in that to talk about it for however mm -hmm. long your podcast is. And have fun with it. Like, don't, don't be scared to be a little bit ridiculous in your own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So the, I get to run the panel, so I get to do more than one. <laughs> so the, Greg's point, fun. You may have a job that you don't really like and you have to get up for it each and every day. If your podcast, if your hobby interests are getting to the point where you go, I don't want to do that anymore, or this is a struggle to get through, then there's no problem taking a step back and reassessing whether this is something that you want to be doing. If the, Geek, the Release the Geek podcast has been amazing for me, I've managed to interview some amazing people, including well-known comic artists, where I'm just sitting there going, I can't believe my life, I'm talking <laughs> to these people. Whatever you're doing needs to be fun. It could lead to cool things, it could lead to the credibility to ask somebody to come and sit down and talk to you that you think maybe we never would have had the chance to speak to this person in the first place. Mm. Understanding that this is going to be a process is really important. You might want to think about recording a couple that you know that will never ever go to air. Do a couple of test runs, sit down, have fun, sitting around with the people that you think you might want to be dealing with play with it, then record the podcast, and then see what you could actually do to tighten it up, to tidy it up. That's going to give you an immeasurable learning opportunities that you wouldn't normally have going live. You don't have to put everything out to air, run it a couple of times, refine your approach, learn what you're doing, and then you can finally put a polished product out on the air. 
Anybody else want to add anything to those? Oh, I think, I think that's so. a, that yeah. covers it. Oh, so we are done. Well. done. This is now done. the definitive yeah. intro to podcasting. Get it, get a podcast. <laughs> Frost. There we go. And we we hope to see more podcasts out there, guys. Yeah, yeah. we do want to see. Podca the podcasting community is awesome. It's like the YouTube community. You start meeting up with people. Hey, I really enjoyed that thing you mm. do. Uh, I can tell you right now, Sam Wright from Tapco, uh, I want to pick her brain. She's just started her YouTube channel. You need to get on and see Sam Wright from Tech Girl. Go on to YouTube and watch her stuff because she's authentic in the messages she delivers and she provides information in a fun and informative manner. I want to now speak to her and go, how did you do this? What was that technique? Geek of all trades, Geek XP, Variance Cover, we all share information. It becomes a community because we all recognize what we're trying to do and if it's done in an authentic manner, you can make some amazing friends and have some great times. So that's it for this particular panel presentation. We're coming to you live from ICON 2016. This is our main stage panel. We'll be doing panel presentations all day today. All of these videos will go live onto YouTube as of next week. ICON 2016 at Gallagher Convention Center. We're powered by always on Wi-Fi, super fast Wi-Fi when you need it. Guys, thank you very much. We'll be back in 10 minutes with the rise of speculative fiction where we have Raymond Feist, Fred Stratum, and Sanjana Singh taking the stage talking about how speculative fiction has grown in society. Please come back in 10 minutes. Check that out. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for watching. This is Les Allen from Geek XP, the engine for the South African geek community. If you really like this video, please do us a favor and just click the like button down below. And if you want to get the latest updates on all of our videos coming through to the Geek XP channel, please click subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you soon.